Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I uh, came across something that came through my feed from Weightology today, uh, and it was discussing how to cheat on a body fat test or a body composition test. So uh, let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing, do a little bit of crafting, and let's talk about this. And this is interesting because it cites some studies in there, and here's where we run into problems. Uh, normally, we know that body fat measurements of uh, most types have been really inaccurate. Like you would never trust uh, scientific data or someone's personal test on themselves about how much muscle they gained, how much fat they lost based off of either a skin fold or a bioimpedance. They're just not accurate enough to give us small amounts of measurement, meaning short periods of time. Um, you know, we've known this for a long time that their margin of error is so high uh, that you actually can't tell if, if someone did better than someone else if you're comparing two really, really similar things. And that's really a problem. That's a big problem uh, for, for studying things. Um, but we've always had DEXA scans. And, you know, I've cited a lot of studies that have DEXA scans in them. I've cited a lot of studies with DEXA scans because DEXA scan is considered to be the golden standard of showing changes in body composition. Like we can do that and we can know how much muscle someone gained in 12 weeks or six months or whatever, uh, how much body fat they lost or gained. It's a really, really useful tool. You know, it's a really useful tool because it's the most accurate measurement we had. But here's the problem we run into. Uh, this stuff in one of the studies showed that actually whether you're fasted or not massively affects the DEXA scans. They've taken people in studies, in some recent studies, and they've looked at they've looked at how much it's changed based upon them eating through the day. Someone fasted versus eating. And here's where it gets scary. Uh, because if we're going to do studies on things, this may not be accurate enough to tell us what's going on. This might actually reset most of the data and findings that we have unless we know for a fact the exact condition the person was in under lab con uh, laboratory conditions in the previous 24 hours to them taking the DEXA scan because it, it could allow people to cheat. It could allow researchers or companies to actually bias data that the data looks totally good, but they cheat on the data. Or it could allow for massive fuzz in the data, make making the data almost useless because here's what they found. On the most recent one, they found that on average, eating breakfast Someone who did a DEXA scan fasted and went and ate breakfast, and it didn't matter the composition of the meal. It didn't matter whether it was a high-fat meal or a high-carb meal. That was compared. Uh, what they found is that the food that you eat will register as lean mass. Even if you were to eat really high-fat food, it will register as lean mass. That means it's going to register as muscle on the DEXA scan. All right? Uh, now you guys can see where this is going. What they found on average was that the people who ate breakfast gained anywhere between like 0.6 and 0.9 kilograms of lean mass. That's around two pounds for those who don't know kilos. That's two pounds of muscle gain on the on the DEXA scan, the most accurate measure of, of body composition in the world. And they lost an average of 0.2 kilograms, 0.2 kilograms of fat. That's half a pound of fat. All right, that was only 30 minutes apart. 30 minutes apart, and that's what they found. So here's the thing. Um, if someone was measuring something and they took a group of people and they wanted them to show an amazing change in body composition, if any of the people in the befores were fasted and then they ate in their afters, like they did it before, whatever, like they're going to do a study to see if a supplement or a weight training protocol puts muscle on people, right? You guys see where this is going? See why this is a problem? All right, and this is why we've had some studies come back and show unbelievable results every now and then with something. It's like, no, that's impossible. Uh, there's no way they did that. But we see some of those. Uh, in fact, I did a study a while back. It had some big noise in the data that didn't look right that I had linked and had a problem with. All right, so here's your problem. If we take a study on that, they can automatically, you're going to have individuals in there in the fasted versus uh, fed in the before and after who will have gained two pounds of artificial muscle that they didn't actually gain and have lost half a pound of fat that they didn't actually lose just because of the different testing criteria even on the same machine or vice versa. So here's your problem. If you're going to compare two weight training protocols, particularly on a really short time period, I mean, even noobs, novices don't gain more than three to four pounds of muscle even with noob gains in eight weeks, right? 
So if you're going to test something like 8 or 12 weeks, a really short period of time, there are going to be people who are going to have potentially, because they didn't take the scan under the same conditions, could have up to 2 pounds more muscle or less muscle than they really have. And they're going to show fat loss or fat gain that may or may not actually be there depending upon if they were fed or fasted. So the only way we can start trusting studies now, we actually need to know if all the test subjects, and they compare two, two sorts of training protocols. Hey, let's compare eight rep sets to 15 rep sets over six months and see who gains more muscle. Well, you see the problem? Six months is a really short period of time. What if they're taking people who've been lifting at least a year? People lifting a year usually gain a pound or less of muscle a month. So that means these are people who probably are going to gain no more at the most five or six pounds of muscle in a six-month study. You see how this could really skew two pounds of muscle difference? Could really skew the results? You could actually get, if a few people messed up the, the, the study, you know, if they only had, say, 10 people in each test group and several of them crossed over and messed up, like some of them in the least effective group actually were fasted before and then ate for the afters, the least effective method might actually show more muscle gain. It might skew the results. The least effective method might actually show better results as a result of the DEXA scan. Um, and, and that would be okay if they're going to count it as statistical, statistically relevant, meaning they're looking at the margin of error. But maybe we didn't know back a while back that the margin of error on a DEXA scan is this high. And if we don't know that, you see how that could become a problem. Uh, this means that a lot of our studies that are out there on muscle mass, on body fat, from training, supplements, everything else, unless we actually know on their DEXA scans if they did all of them fasted or not, on the before and afters, the data could be off up to two pounds of muscle. And again, researchers could totally skew the data without telling you if they didn't record if the test subjects were fasted or not for the DEXA scan. If they don't record that in the actual notes, that also means that the researchers could actually bias the data in the direction they want it to go because they didn't include an important piece of data. Uh, so there's a problem. From now on, if we don't see this in the notes, we can't actually trust studies uh, comparing muscle gains or body recomposition particularly because again, the ability to lose fat and gain muscle at the same time, purely 30 minutes apart, going to be a pretty big deal on any study looking at shifts in body composition now, isn't it? This is going to be a problem. So how are we supposed to trust this? We have to assume the margin of error is up to two pounds of muscle and a half a pound of fat, that it could be off in any direction anytime we look at test results now. Uh, now, what's interesting, that wouldn't affect so much certain things like the, the anabolic studies we've seen. Why? Because they gain such enormous amounts of muscle that it's way beyond the margin of error of the DEXA scan. Now, that's interesting, uh, and, and that actually helps us because when we were dealing with something like the anabolic studies, I showed the guy sitting on their ass gained 18 pounds of muscle and lost a pound or two of fat who were on 600 milligrams of testosterone, the guys who just quit lifting completely and just went on testosterone and replaced their lifting with the drugs in the studies, they gain that, and that's more reasonable. That's easier to look at because we're talking about very large amounts, right? We saw large amounts of muscle increase, so even if this had been skewed up to two pounds being off, still means they gained an average of 16 pounds of muscle sitting on their asses, uh, not exercising, and still lost a, a half a pound of fat because their margin of error is half a pound of fat here, and they lost about a pound. So studies like that, it's still useful, the DEXA scan, but all the other studies where we're comparing an A and B comparison, a training style, a diet, a supplement, and we use DEXA scans because we know DEXA scan is the most effective and most accurate form of measuring body composition we have, but now we find out that whether people are fed or fasted or not massively affects it. So from this point forward, researchers are actually going to need to uh, include that to be taken seriously. And if they don't, then we've got to actually question their results. And that's how science is supposed to work. Um, we're supposed to be able to look at science and see everything that's there, the controls, the variables, and then compare what's really going on. Because if studies aren't done correctly, the data might show one thing, but the data without all the other information around it uh, regarding the controls, and the controls in this case would be knowing that everyone was tested fasted who did their DEXA scans at any given point. Meaning if a person had two or three DEXA scans throughout the course of a study, we need to know for a fact they were fasted, and the researchers have to include that. 
they have to include that because people who are coming into a lab, the odds that they're going to be fasted, it's going to be harder to control. Uh, the only way that's going to be acceptable is if they were kept in the lab overnight for an overnight fasted and then DEXA scan first thing in the morning. Um, that's actually the level we're going to have to go to if we want studies to uh, be reasonable. Otherwise, we're going to be trying to measure things that the DEXA scans are not going to give us the ability to measure. Because any sort of short-term changes, uh, the margin of error of two pounds of muscle difference, two pounds of lean mass difference is a margin of error, is going to make every single short-term study, like anything that's six to 12 weeks, is going to be 100% useless without knowing that the test subjects were fasted. Uh, because it's just not going to be accurate enough. Uh, so it's interesting to see this of how much this affects this. Uh, and it's again something that we're going to have to look at a lot closer when people try to study things. There's going to be a way that you need to be aware that people can scam you with supplements. All right, they can scam you with training methods is because we need to know what sort of controls were in place for the studies. And this is a new one that we actually have to think about now. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.